Welcome back, Chemistry 30. This is the MS 1.1 Lewis symbols and octet rules section. So we'll look at writing Lewis symbols for atoms and ions and describing the octet rule. So Lewis symbols, the electrons involved in chemical bonding are called valence electrons. So valence electrons refers to those outer ones that are involved in bonding which are those of the outermost shell, as I just said. So those ones in the outer level. So if you remember drawing Bohr diagrams back in the day, those ones on that outer edge are the ones that are involved in bonding. The American chemist G.N. Lewis suggested a simple way of showing the valence electrons in an atom, since those are the ones we are concerned about, and tracking them during bond formation, using what are known as either Lewis electron dot symbols or just simply Lewis symbols. The Lewis symbol for an element consists of the element's chemical symbol plus a dot for each of those outer or valence electrons. So, for example, sulfur has six valence electrons, and its symbol looks like that. So, this dots are placed on all four. So, we imagine that we have our element symbol, and we have four areas above, below, and left and right side. So, top, bottom, left, and right. Each side can accommodate up to two electrons. At least we'll assume that for now. All four sides are equivalent, which means that the choice in which sides to place electrons is uh, arbitrary. And generally, we spread out the dots as much as possible as we're filling it up. So let's say we had eight electrons to place. We can maybe start here, then spreading out as far as possible would be over here. Spreading out as far as possible would be here, and then here. So you'd place four dots, so there'd be one in each area. And then, of course, if there's more, then you continue on in that fashion until we could potentially have a total of eight. All right? So that's why the sulfur one looks like that. Uh, so in the Lewis symbol for S, for instance, we prefer the dot arrangement as shown um, up there, as opposed to, let's say, doing it like this, in which we have an empty area. So it's usually not drawn like that. Now, recall that the number of valence electrons in any group A element or representative group is the same as the group number. So, for example, if we're looking at sulfur, it's in group 6A, so it has six electrons. So that's interesting. So if we look at the A group, so over here, the 1A group, they would have one electron in their outer level. The 2A group, two electrons in their outer level. Transition elements, the group Bs, don't follow that same pattern. But if we continue here, 3A, three electrons in the outer level. 4A, four electrons. 5A, five. 6A, like sulfur or oxygen, have six valence electrons. And then 7 would have seven. And then 8A would have eight in their outer level, with the exception of helium. If you recall, the hydrogen atom has one level with one electron, and helium would have two so it has a maximum of two only, whereas the rest of them have a total of eight. So that's an interesting part. You can easily see how many valence electrons by simply looking at the group number. Which brings us to the octet rule. Atoms will gain, lose, or as we'll see, share electrons in order to achieve the same number of electrons as the noble gases. And of course, the noble gases have eight valence electrons with the exception of helium. So noble gases have a very stable electron arrangement as evidenced by the lack of chemical reactivity because all the noble gases except helium have eight valence electrons. Many atoms undergoing reactions try to end up with eight valence, react, uh, eight valence electrons as well. So this observation has led to the guideline known as the octet rule where Atoms tend to gain, lose, or share, as I mentioned before, electrons until they are surrounded by eight valence electrons. An octet of electrons consists of a full outer shell in an atom. In a Lewis symbol, an octet would be listed as four pairs, as we saw over here. So if I had some element, one, two, three, four pairs of electrons would be considered full. Uh, there are exceptions to the octet rule, as we'll see but it provides a useful framework for introducing many important concepts of bonding. 
So if we do a couple of examples, draw the uh, Lewis structures for each of the following atoms. So if we look at oxygen, I'm just going to redraw it over here just so it's bigger. So oxygen, super easy. We just look over here. Oh, it's group 6A, so it has six valence electrons. So I could start by putting one here, 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 here. So I've used that four, then start pairing them up so I could have that. Now I couldn't I could have started over on the other side. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So I could have made it like that. Uh, B, magnesium. So I've looked at magnesium. Magnesium was over here, group 2A, so it has two valence electrons. I could go top and bottom or left and right. It doesn't matter. C, chlorine. So chlorine over here. Uh, group 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have an empty space right there. And uh, neon, of course, is a noble gas. So yes, it would have eight valence electrons. So its area would be entirely full. So easy, easy peasy right there. Two, determine the stable ion. Okay, so we're going to look at, to become stable, what is the atom going to do? It's either going to gain or lose. And uh, if you recall uh, what you talked about in earlier grades, metals tend to lose electrons to become stable, whereas non-metals... tend to gain electrons to become stable. So if you look at aluminum, AL, uh, aluminum is uh, group 3, and notice it's on the left hand, so don't forget we have that, uh, that staircase right here, right? which separates metals from non-metals, loosely speaking. We'll see, of course, there are exceptions to that. But aluminum has three electrons. So, another, so again, in, in order to become stable, it needs to have eight, right? So if we're starting off with three, there's basically two ways we can become a, uh, a stable uh, ion by gaining or losing. So if I have three, I could gain five to be, get to eight. Or I could lose three, and then the level below is going to be the full level. And that's, in fact, what happens. So it's going to lose three electrons, and the current level will be empty, and the level below will be considered to be full. And, of course, if we lose electrons, of course, if you look at aluminum here, atomic number 13... Atomic number 13 implies that aluminum had 13 protons and 13 electrons. But if it loses three, if it loses three electrons, it now has 13 protons and 10 electrons. And that gives us a net charge of three positives. Because 10 electrons cancel with 10 protons, leaving us with three. So yes, aluminum becomes... Al3+. And yes, it does. If we look at our common ion chart at the back of our periodic table booklet, Al is 3+. Now, it's common practice if we're uh, losing or gaining electrons to, to distinguish um, the atom Lewis structure from the ion Lewis structure. It's common practice to draw a set of square brackets around here like this. So the aluminum atom has three valence electrons. The aluminum ion has those three electrons gone, that it lost, and the level below will be the full level. So that's how we do that. If we look at B, nitrogen. So if we look at nitrogen on the periodic table, there it is right there. It's group five. So it'll have five valence electrons. Two, three, four, five. And, of course, hint, hint, it's on the right-hand side. It's a non-metal, so we know that it's going to gain electrons. And that makes sense. Whatever involves the lowest number. It has five, so if it gains three, it can have eight. 
If it was to lose, it would have to lose five. So you kind of think of it, what's easier? Gain three or lose five? What involves the lowest number? Gain five electrons. So it'll gain the five electrons, and what will happen is that it'll then become full in its current level. And because it gained three, it's going to have three negatives that are unbalanced. So we could think of it as it had seven protons and seven electrons, but if it gains three, it's going to have ten electrons and seven protons. So those three will be unbalanced, and the symbol for that will look like that. So nonmetals, you'll see it has, they'll have full levels of electrons, whereas nonmetals will have an empty current level. The level below is considered full. Bromine. Uh, bromine, of course, is group 7, so it has 7 electrons, so everything's full except for 1, so of course it's a non-metal, you know it's going to gain 1 electron, and it'll look something like this, square bracket, it gained 1 extra one, so it'll have 1 negative charge that's unbalanced. Alright, so that's how you do that, should be able to do the assignment now, and uh, we'll see you again.